Hey, what's up all you fishing addicts out there? Thanks so much for tuning into another Addicted Fishing tutorial. If you're brand new to our channel, do not forget, go down here and tap that little subscribe button. You're gonna find things like educational content and lots of entertaining stuff where we're just traveling around the world and catching fish. So if you love fishing, tap that little green button. Now that we got that out of the way, we are today out on the lake. It's a beautiful sunny day and I thought, man, what a perfect day to get out and do some trout fishing tutorials. And one thing to keep in mind with our channel, guys, is when we do these tutorials, we're not necessarily trying to catch fish. We're just trying to teach you guys how to get out there and put some effort in and catch some fish. So we go through the technique very quickly. We show the setup and we don't really put much effort into trying to catch a fish. So it's just more about teaching you how to get out and catch these fish. And today it's going to be how to troll a night crawler for trout coming at you right now. All right, everyone, so when it comes to rods, you really can use anything that you want. I like to fish an ultralight setup. This is an Okuma Guide Select Pro paired with an Okuma 30S RTX, but really any brand that you prefer. We just really love Okuma Fishing Tackle, and so that's what we're using today, a Guide Select Pro. This is a two to six pound rating. So anything that's in like an ultralight model, See if Sean can kind of zoom in on that. That's the rating on that guy, two to six pound. But uh, anything that's in that ultralight setup, you're gonna you're gonna like to use just because it's a lot of fun when you're reeling in these fish. So the other thing that we're doing here is a lot of us out here in the Northwest specifically, we use braid. And one of the main reasons we use braid is we just like the durability of it. And then also, especially when you're trolling like this setup that we're gonna teach you right now, it just cuts through the water a lot better. So you're not gonna have as much drag in the water when you're trolling your setup out there. So we're gonna start with a 10 pound braid, which is a pretty light, pretty light braid. So we're gonna start with that. And then what we're gonna do next is go to our fluorocarbon. But first, before we do that, what we have to do is you're gonna to wanna to take a swivel here and this is going to be your weight dropper so what I like to do is use these snap swivels just like this a little snap swivel like that and basically literally all I do is put it on my line like that so it's sliding just like that then what we're gonna do is take a barrel swivel just like that Small, super small in size. You want to kind of keep everything small here. I like the black as well, just in case these fish are deciding they want to be finicky and you don't want to be distracting them with a gold or a bronze barrel swivel. We're going to tie that on there like so. Okay, so there we go. We got the barrel swivel tied on. We're going to tie, cut that tag end off. It's going to fall in the bottom of my boat and I'll clean that up later. Just like that. Next, what we're going to want to do is our fluorocarbon. So, I'm going to, I already got a nice little section of fluorocarbon already here. So this is six pound fluorocarbon. We got about three feet there. You can use anywhere from three to five feet, kind of depending on how finicky these fish are being where you're trying to catch them. So three to five feet will work. Um, and then what we have down to a size six mustad bait hook. And basically what this is, is if Sean can get in there, it's got these little barbs on there. And that barb is what's gonna help that night crawler stay on that, on that hook when you're trolling it. So same thing, we're gonna tie that fluorocarbon to the other side of your barrel swivel now. So get that tied on there. And guys, this troll, trolling these night crawlers has been something I've done literally my whole life. So you can, uh, it's, it's really effective if the fish are wanting to play. Get that tied on there. Same thing. You're gonna wanna, after you get that tied on there, you're gonna wanna cut that tag line off there. And I just use a standard fisherman's knot, basically wrapped seven times back through itself. Seems to hold well. And it's a super simple and fast knot. So then what's gonna happen is this slider is going to slide down and land on that barrel swivel like so. And why we put that on there is for the next step. So let me go down here and I like to use, these are a Dave's Tangle free weight. And the reason I like to use these is because they clip right on. They have these little, um, these little barrels that they clip onto. And it, you want to base your weight based on how deep you think the fish are hanging out. So today I'm going to go a little bit bigger of a weight here. Let's try this guy. 
and all you do, and you could, you don't have to use a Dave's Tangle Free. If you want to use a piece of lead, you know, you can hole punch a piece of lead, do whatever you want to do there. But these are nice, like I said, because simply go like this, boom, and they're clipped on. Just like so. And then this slides on your line. All right, so really quickly, just in case I went too fast for you guys there, we got your braided line. You're gonna put your sliding snap swivel on there. That's gonna slide. You're going to clip some sort of weight. Again, this is Dave's Tangle Free. And I think if you guys wanna buy these Dave's Tangle Free, you can get them on Amazon. Just go to Amazon, type in Dave's Tangle Free, and you can find he's got all sorts of different sizes and stuff for steelhead and trout. Then we're gonna affix the barrel swivel on there down to your fluorocarbon line. To your mustad hook now the fun part these little juicy buggers you can pick night crawlers up in any local gas station usually or local walmart or sporting goods store or whatever now this is this is so when we're trolling night crawlers you actually want to use a whole night crawler so let me show you how this works take one out of there and one thing i like to do and it sounds mean but i like to just kind of kill these things and put them out of their misery so you're not sitting there hooking them as you know they're squiggling around plus it makes it easier so literally all i do is i'm just going to take them and i'm going to just put it out of its misery and what that's going to do is make it so the night crawler's dead and then also it's going to make it a lot easier to put on the hook so it's not wiggling around as much all right so after you killed the night crawler what you're going to do is you need to attach a second hook to be able to troll this correctly and also make sure that the fish don't miss it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take another strand of fluorocarbon here. And you're gonna wanna measure it along your night crawler. So you wanna kinda get that distance there. Use the fisherman's third knife. Actually, don't do that. Don't use your teeth, it messes them up. Um, then what we're going to do is we're going to take this fluorocarbon and we're actually going to attach it onto this other hook. So I'm going to get a loop started there. So I'm going to get a loop started there and I'm literally just going to do a couple square knots. These aren't giant monster trout that we're fishing for in this lake. So you don't need to do anything super fancy here. Just a perfect little knot like that. And then we're gonna cut our tag end off again. Need to get a second hook here. Out of the old mustad pile. Grab us a second hook. Every night crawler is different. So I like to leave yourself enough room here to where you can trail that hook back good enough. Tie this guy on again, using your standard fisherman's knot. So, like I said, every night crawler is gonna be different, but I think you, you know, about a four finger spacing between your hooks, about a four finger spacing. And then what you're gonna do, again, is you're gonna take your night crawler, you're gonna attach that brown part to the top, that thicker part of the worm, like so. And then you're gonna take that trailer hook and you're gonna attach that to the back end of the worm. Just right through the center of the, of the sucker. Just like that. So that's what you have. And then as you can see, you got a little bit of a turn here. So as you, as you cast this out there, or as you troll this out in the lake, it's gonna spin. So let's go take it out into the lake and show you guys what we mean here. All right, addicts. So now that we got that, uh, we got that freaking worm out there. As you can see, when I'm trolling it through the water, it's got a little bit of a spin to it. And Sean cut to that B-roll right now little bit of the spin to the worm. So basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna let this thing out slowly. You don't wanna let it out too fast. And your weight is gonna be what kind of decides how deep you're gonna fish. So I'm just gonna kind of let it out there. 
You don't want to troll this ins insanely fast either. You're gonna you're gonna want to troll it just a decent speed, one or two on your own mid coda, whatever works best for you. And then what you're gonna do is you're just gonna play with it. Figure out like what depth it needs to be at. I already just got bit, Sean. Something just nailed it. This is a fairly deep lake, so I'm gonna keep letting it out. Let's let some line out here. I don't think I'm really in jeopardy of hitting bottom, so I think the water temperature is a little bit colder right now, so I'm gonna I'm gonna get it down in the into that zone and just see if we can't get one to bite here. And then you're just gonna troll it. You're gonna let that thing ride. See what happens here. So as you're trolling addicts, if you aren't getting bites and you feel like, man, there's fish around, but you're not getting bite, just keep letting a little bit more line out. Keep getting that thing down deeper and deeper. It may just be that those fish are a little bit deeper than you're able to get to. So you can also upsize your weight or downsize your weight, depending on where you want that worm to be in the water call. We'll do, we'll do one little pass with you guys to the end of the lake and turn around and come back and see if we can't get a fish. So stay tuned. Well, we did a pass down, we did a pass back, the fish didn't bite. That could be a few different things. It could be that the fish just aren't biting or it could be that I wasn't using enough weight. So when you go out there and you do this technique yourself, make sure that you're switching your weights up, make sure you're changing your trolling speeds and make sure you kind of get right into that zone that you think those fish are going to be biting in because if you're not down where the fish are at, you ain't going to catch them. So we're going to switch weights out and try again. Thank you so much for tuning in. We really appreciate you guys tuning into these videos and we hope you're learning a lot. We hope you guys are getting out and catching a bunch of fish yourself. If you guys want to see more of this stuff, be sure to turn that little bell notification on if you're one of our subscribers. Tap that bell and turn that thing on so you know when our videos are getting published. Thanks again for tuning in. We'll see you on the river. Thank you.